I have one last um, shout out that I want to talk to somebody. I feel like this week I've accurately communicated, hopefully, um, technique and posing. And I've accurately communicated what attracts me so much to the brand that I shoot in terms of I get to connect with women and or people and I get to I get to have a conversation that I love to have, a, a conversation that, that is about being a better person and it's a conversation about, you know, loving yourself and all that. I get that. <clears throat> I'm not gonna do I'm not gonna cry, I'm not gonna cry. So I really love having that conversation. That that conversation is important to me. And I know that somehow I must have struck a chord because after my first creative life, I got so many stories. Just stories. Long, beautiful stories. On and you know, just people telling me that just I can't believe what these people were writing to me. I'm a complete stranger. I read every single one. I got over 12,000 emails since from the last five and a half months, and I read every single one. I am, I am unable physically now to respond to them. And yet there is not a day that goes by that I don't read an email in my inbox. So if you send me one, and it always starts with, I hope you don't think I'm a stalker, uh, or um, you'll probably never read this, or um, I know you're getting assaulted by thousands of emails, but I want you to start the next email with, I know you're gonna read this and I might not get a reply, but I still know that this is gonna fall on your ears because I read every single one. And they just move the hell out of me. So last night, I was working with Simona and we were talking about the program today and what we can give and how we're photoshopping and how we can you know, give that on as a gift. And I got an email from, um, Nikki Klosser, and Nikki actually lives in Seattle, and you might know that name because Nikki auditioned for the chat host, so she would have been live on the chat host day, is that correct? She was, and she was also um, in our Joe Busink uh, workshop, she was oh. one of the models, she was one of the, um, I think a bridesmaid? Okay, so Nikki Klosser um, is a Seattle photographer, and she's a startup business, isn't she? Oh, new to boudoir and glamour at least. Um, Nikki sent me an email. Nikki's best friend is going through something right now and she, she asked me two things. She said, she told me the story and she said that she would do anything to get me to photograph her friend and I can't do it because I'm fully booked and I've promised other people. So I read the email, and what struck me about the email was not the story, because I've, I've read stories, lots of beautiful stories. But what struck me so beautifully about this email is that her friend Jill is currently going through something and, as a young woman that she shouldn't have to go through. And the, the thing that really hit it home for me was that she said, um, not only that she would do anything for me to photograph her, but Nikki has just photographed Jill. And she said, if you can't photograph her, I want you to critique the images that I've taken of her. Because what's important, <laughs> is that Jill wants her story to be told. So this is not about anything other than Jill. So I've got Jill on Skype because I want to talk to her. Let me just make sure that we are ready. I'm so sorry, Jill. I know you're probably watching live and I'm making a mash of this already. We might be a little bit early on the time that we told her, but I think they're going to... That's okay. I'm going to keep her. talking about Jill. Okay. The... I really want Jill to talk about where she's at right now. But basically, um, Nikki took a photograph of Jill, a, like a boudoir shoot, and she wanted to take a shot that was honest and yet could be used for maybe a publication because Jill would like her story to be told to the world. And when I saw it, 
my first thought was, unfortunately, I'm unable to photograph or fly to Kentucky and photograph Jill right now for where she's at. So I just wanted to bring Jill on so that she could talk to you guys. And um, hopefully um, we can send a message out there um, that Jill wants to be told. So we are ready for the cool. Skype call, if you are. I think my greatest gratitude today is that all week I keep feeling like I'm in an Oprah session. <laughs> and yet the truth is, is that my life's a bit of an Oprah session. So I'm kind of okay with that. Um, I feel like everybody really got the fact that I like to connect with people in this way and that I feel incredibly blessed that I get the opportunity to do that. So um, I'd just like to say from the bottom of my heart, thank you so much um, for allowing me to share that part of who I am and what I do. Because it might not be what you introduce into your portrait business, but it's been a really big part of my journey as a woman and a person and a human being and a photographer. Um, that I get to give this gift of beauty to people. So I think they're probably just, oh, here we go. Here we go. Hi, Jill. Hi, Jill. Hi, how are you? I'm good, thank you. Can, you can see me on the Skype cam? Yes, I can. Okay, can you there, see me? There. Yes, I can. It's so Hi. lovely to meet you. Where are you calling from, Jill? Um, I'm in uh, Louisville, Kentucky. Cool. So uh, you know that your friend Nikki emailed me last night? And oh, she yes. I couldn't sleep last night ever since she called me. <laughs> so I wanted to bring you on the show so that um, I could do two things. One of them was talk to you about where you're at and why you want to um, come on the show because um, I would like to do something for you today. Um, well, actually, I wanted um, to come on the show, and first of all, this is a huge honor that I'm on the show and to meet you, and I've met your, the producer of the show, um, and they were awesome. Um, but anyways, I just wanted to get my story out because um, when I was 32, I was diagnosed with stage 4 breast cancer, so I had to go through um, the most intense grueling chemo, and unfortunately, I lost my hair, my eyebrows, eyelashes, fingernails, toenails. And then I had to do radiation, and, and then I had to do a double mastectomy, and then unfortunately, the radiation um, caused such a huge hole in my left side, so they had to take my left implant out. So right now I only have, you know, my fake implant on my right side. And then uh, about six months ago, um, I felt like I broke a rib, so I went into my oncologist, and they told me, unfortunately, I uh, it was. Uh, metastics, it, my, my breast cancer metastasized um, into uh, my breast again, but this time it was in my sternum and it was stage four bone cancer and it's incurable this time. So right now I'm on, um, you know, uh, a chemo that I take daily and then they have given me a shot called Lupron and it's put me in a menopause. And I just wanted to get my story out because I just feel with women my age, you know, when you look at magazines and all that, they don't embrace, you know, you, I just feel like when you, you can't feel, people think you can't feel beautiful and sexy having breast cancer or having breasts that don't look like, you know, what you look like in magazines and stuff. So I just wanted to get the story out to young women, older women, anybody that's going through this, just to let them know that you can still be beautiful and sexy and still have breast cancer. So that was my whole my whole thing that I wanted to get out. I feel like this God gave this to me for a purpose and I feel like this is my purpose to just get my story out and uh, help women all around the world. So, <clears throat> oh Jill, <laughs> <laughs> um, the question I wanted to ask you was, can I show the photographs that Nikki took of you? Because they're very, oh, very beautiful. 100%. Mm. Okay, so, um, the boys have loaded them because they let you send them to them. So I would like to, uh, the screen's just going to flick for a minute and um, I want to show the image that was sent to me um, that okay. Nikki, Nikki wanted me to critique. Okay. 
Isn't she beautiful? Um, Nikki's new to Budbar photography, but she's done a beautiful job of shooting you. Um, of course, I wanted to do two things. One of them was, you can go back to Jill, please, Mike. Um, I wanted to do two things, Jill. One of them was, you said you wanted the story to be told. So I've done a shout out with Creative Live and we've, done, we've got a little plan for you to try and get your message out there. So I want to call any videographers, anybody who wants to, or writers. Oh, are you okay? Sorry. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm fine. <laughs> um, <laughs> anybody that wants to help share the story magazines or anything like that, because you do have such a brave, beautiful story, and it's one that I'd love to tell. Um, I would love to photograph you more than anything in the world. I would feel the greatest honour. <laughs> Help me out of here, people. Okay, Jill, in two weeks' time, I have a 10-day holiday booked for the first time in four years. And I looked at my schedule and I saw that holiday and I thought, right, I've got a holiday and I've got 10 days and I'm, this is the most amount of gratitude a human being can have. I won a trip to Paris because I'm the Australian Portrait Photographer of the Year, which is the greatest honour for me. And one of the prizes, <laughs> one of the prizes um, for me was to go to Paris for 10 days. How lucky am I to win a trip to Paris? So I would like to take you to Paris with me. And, <laughs> and I'd like to photograph you in Paris. Are you, are you kidding me? No. And I asked Nikki if she'd like to come too because she's your best friend and she can assist us. <laughs> and I, I just, um, I'm going to bring back your shoot and I'm going to hopefully find somebody that can write your story really, really beautifully so that you can share it with everyone. But would you like to come to Paris with me? Um, uh, let me think about that. Yeah. <laughs> Are you, I would be honored, like honored. I can eat this. I feel like God, like, I feel, pinch me. Am I dreaming? <laughs> and I was just saying to my friends the other day, I can't believe I'm going to Paris on my own. So now I'm not going on my own. Now no. I'm going with two fabulous women. And um, I'm going to do everything I can for you to shout that out because I watched a, I watched a dear friend go through this. <laughs> and um, you're just such a beautiful, inspiring woman. And I think you're really brave. And... I hope that everybody hears that message that you've just got to love everything you've got no matter what. Sue, I, you, I feel like you, like God, you're an angel that God sent, like you're an angel. Like I, I feel like I just, I, I'm speechless. I, I feel like I might even like peed myself. <laughs> I started I started to talk to um, the girls this afternoon. I talked to Kenna, and Kenna was telling me something um, at the break before we started talking um, that breast cancer is a, a big part of your family. Um, yes, I um, on both sides of my family. Uh, my my father's sister Renee, um, we lost three years ago. Um, actually, just about now, uh, three years ago. And she had um, beat, um, beat breast cancer one time and had a single mastectomy, and then it came back. Um, and we lost her um, um, the second time around. Um, and on my mom's side, my Aunt Kathy, um, she had, when she was my age, um, she had breast cancer the first time and had a single mastectomy. And then 20 years later, um, had got it again and um, had another mastectomy, but she is, um, is a survivor and is sort of her, she's retired and her entire life is, is doing all kinds of breast cancer 
walks and um, just so much um, about spreading the word and, and celebrating um, women who are survivors, but also spreading the word and raising money and funding for cancer research. Um, and I would just, I would have to bet that probably every single person in this room um, is touched somehow, some way mm. um, by, by breast cancer. Mm. And so, I just. Sure. So Jill, I couldn't think of anything better than taking you to Paris with me. And I, oh. th my I, God. I just I think I was the luckiest person to win a trip and I couldn't think of anybody I would rather take with me and it would be my honor to do a beautiful photo shoot. I've always dreamed of doing a photo shoot in Paris and I get to do it with you. Oh, the, I, I, I wish I, I would, I wanna give you the world's biggest hug and kiss. <laughs> so thank, thank you so you. much, Jill. And I'm gonna do everything in my power for you to get what you want out there because um, it's really, really important. It sends so many messages in so many different directions about what we are and what we have and um, you do it really graciously and um, I just thank you for thank you for picking me to be your photographer. Oh, so thank you so much I mean you made all my dreams come true and you're gonna touch so many women's lives like you have no idea how you're gonna touch so many people's lives you know I, I'm speechless I'm I mean I'm I, I love you <laughs> I'll Thank see you. You. I'll see you in Paris. Uh wee oui, wee. Oui. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Jill. Thank Look, you. Um I don't get the opportunity to help everybody and it's just something you I, it came up and it was right there and I just thought about it and I thought I can't photograph this girl. You know, I don't have the time to do it and now I get to take her to Paris and um, I would like to be able to bring that back and share that story with the creative livers so that you can, the people who are watching now can see that and um, see her beautiful shoot and uh, celebrate that and I couldn't think of anything I'd rather do in Paris. So we're continu continued to just be blown away by you. It's give, 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 and it's truly, I, know, I said this to you earlier, that um, you, Sue Bryce practices what she preaches, and it's just an inspiration. Um, there are so many people in the chat rooms who are responding um, and crying and responding, in addition to people who are saying that they um, know people, or maybe even they themselves would love to help tell Jill's story. Yes. And so, I just checked with some folks, and um, if you are one of those people, uh, the people who have, who have mentioned that already, um, you can email support at creativelive.com, and we will collect those and forward them along and see what, you know, where to go with that. Yes. But, um, mm -hmm. but please go ahead and, and reach out to support at Creative Live. Um, That's 32 is too young. Yeah. 32 is too young, three months after she was married, yeah. to find out you have to fight that sort of fight yeah. and um, it's just um, yeah 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 mm. um, awareness education love my my second cousin actually who lives in uh, Louisville is same age and was just diagnosed with straight stage four as well and bone cancer and the it's too young um it's too young so my week is has been it's been very intense sometimes it takes me a week to prepare a two-hour keynote when i stand up on stage like at wpbi because i don't just want to stand up on stage and talk about myself i want to try and teach as much as i can in a very short amount of time um i'm not a natural uh, presenter because i've up until th three years ago, thought that this would be inconceivable to me, inconceivable. And yet I always used to have this weird fantasy that I was sitting in front of people with a microphone. So just because I thought it was inconceivable that I'd ever be standing in front of people talking um, doesn't mean that I didn't dream secretly of doing it in some way. Because I've never been short of something to say. <laughs> My family will tell you that. My dad said I could 
to say the alphabet at 18 months old and then I never shut up ever since then. Um, and I would just like to say that um, coming here and educating online has been one of the most incredible experiences because I don't want to teach workshops. Um, it's not my thing to teach workshops. I know that it would be um, really great if I announced workshops all around the world and everybody could come to and I, do, I love doing presentations. Um, I take these times to try and give you as much information as I can over a concentrated um, period of time and I just love this company that has supported me Creative Life so I find it really easy to come here and do this. Um, I would love to bring Hayley Bartholomew back so that I can teach you viral marketing video show reels, how to edit and how to do that from the basic level ground up because that can really change uh, and invite more work into your business and make that work. And um, But really what it comes down to is, I said it the first time, I, it's more true for me now than it was even six months ago, everything, every success you have comes from gratitude. Um, to stop being why me and start being grateful for what you have, once you start doing that, everything just turns around. And... Um, teaching photography or teaching um, portrait photographers how to be better business people and better photographers is just such an easy cool thing to do and it's been really really enjoyable photographing women is just an easy fun cool thing to do and I think I'm about the luckiest girl on the planet right now sorry if I made you cry <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. Okay. Can I ask you one more question? Yes. Okay, from the internet, from Alan Burke. Sue, so many people see themselves reflected in you and sharing your creative and personal journey, which transcends the photographic medium. As you move forward to new challenges, where do you see it all leading for you? What is the ultimate connection you are chasing? The ultimate connection that I'm chasing, Alan, is joy. I decided that um, nothing in this world that you can create is ever, ever as great as a feeling of joy that goes through your soul and whatever that joy is, whatever that feeling is that makes you feel joy, um, embrace it and hold to it for as often as you can, whether it's your family or your children or your friends, you can source joy from just about anywhere. But from this day forth in my life, when I meet people like Jill, when I meet people like everyone, when I meet people like all of you guys, everybody has a story, I will seek in every part of my life to try and find joy in what I do. And if there is no joy in what you're doing, do something else. Just stop doing what you don't want to do anymore. Nothing will happen to you, I guarantee it because the best thing you can ever do is to remove yourself from not liking something. And if there's somebody in your life, whatever it is, just, just actively seek anything that brings you joy, whatever that is on any level. Work from a place of joy, give as much as you can, but it all starts with gratitude. End of story. I love it. I'm really excited to watch you on your journey. Thank you. Yeah, you know, I, it's it's not a new journey so much as um, it's the same journey. It just uh, seems that every now I'm just on a stage so that everybody um, sort of can hear me talk. But I find that so odd. It's quite bizarre. Yeah. I got one question. Sure. What's your favorite uh, flavor ice cream? <laughs> I don't eat ice cream. No, I, th I thought you would say that. I really do. Really? Yeah. I, th oh. I thought you might. Well, what flavor to drink then can I buy you afterwards? <laughs> I think um, you're the only other woman besides my my <laughs> wife that I'm in bed with. You, in bed with Sue, when she's all right with that. The only other woman you can doodle your name, and it's okay. <laughs> it's okay. Over and over. Exactly. No, <laughs> no, Gabe just Bryce. I love Gay Bryce. <laughs> he has done that one. <laughs> um, I drink Veuve Clicquot. Fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, French champagne would be nice. Okay, we can do that. <laughs> um, I've wrapped up early because I sat here a bawling mess. Um, wow, five days, five days. Five days is just gone, like that. Five days. I don't think there's any more in terms of what I do other than you practicing it. You know what I mean? 
just practice, practice, and, and please just go for it. Stay in touch, stay connected via social media, and I'll still try and keep giving more, and if more comes up, I'll give a little bit more and see how we go. And uh, good luck. I throw that challenge out for you to be better than me, better and better and better and better at every level, and I throw that out to everybody, and, and I just wish you all the best, and um, thank you so much for listening to me for five days. I put a couple of cameramen to sleep. Uh, <laughs> oh, that's all right, lullaby. Uh, thanks for listening to this Kiwi accent um, from all around the world, if you're not Kiwis. And um, just thank you so much for your support and thank you so much to Creative Life.